Hi, I'm David L. Eulen. I'm the book critic at the Los Angeles Times, and I'm here with you today to talk about Harper Lee's novel Ghost Set a Watchman, which comes out on July 14th. It's the much anticipated second novel by the author of To Kill a Mockingbird, her first published book in 55 years. It is apparently the first draft that she turned in in 1957 to an editor at the publishing company J.B. Lippincott, which then, after two years of revision and reworking, was turned into To Kill a Mockingbird. There are some overlaps in terms of some of the language and some of the descriptions, passages that are almost verbatim um, from one book to the next. In this book, um, Atticus Finch, the sort of moral center of To Kill a Mockingbird, is a very different kind of character. The novel, uh, the the dramatic arc of the novel of, of Ghost at a Watchman revolves around Scout, or Jean Louise as she is known in, in, in this book, discovering uh, a racist tract among, among her father's reading material and realizing that he is a segregationist. Depending on how you read the book, it either represents a corruption of Atticus, who is one of the great moral characters in American literature, a hero, a literary hero to many readers, or it represents the arc of development of the character. I think that's the more important point. This is the book that was written first, so this is the first Atticus Finch, the older Atticus Finch, the segregationist Atticus. But Lee, in the course of revising the book and turning Ghost at a Watchman into To Kill a Mockingbird, decided to soften the character, decided to change his point of view. Why? It's impossible to say. One possibility is that, the, is that as she was revising Ghost at a Watchman, and turning it into To Kill a Mockingbird, her father, who was the model for Atticus, softened his own views. He apparently had been a segregationist and in the, and in the late 1950s changed his position and became an integrationist. So it's an interesting question. How do we read this novel? Do we read it as an equivalent novel, as an autonomous work? Do we read it in some way as a follow-up since it takes place 20 years later? Or do we read it as an example of a writer's process? Do we read it as a way of seeing inside Lee's creative movement and understanding in some way how she went from one book to the other. I would suggest that it's the latter reading that is the most resonant and the most accurate. In, and I also think that it allows us a kind of generosity or a kind of openness in terms of thinking about Atticus. What does it mean to us as readers that this character who we have grown up with and who has represented a kind of uh, moral stature in American literature turns out to have this other side? If we look at the book as a sequel, and suggest that Atticus came from being that moral center to being morally compromised. That's a child, that's a, that's a, a, an unfortunate story. If we look at it the other way, though, which is to say that Lee started with this compromised character and then developed him into this very centered character we have come to know, that to me is the is the important story. The real story here is how Harper Lee came to a different understanding of that character and through that different understanding of, of character created a novel that has been lasting for more than half a century that is a staple of, of uh, school reading lists um, that represents some element of uh, American idealism. That's a really interesting question and I think that that is the sort of legacy both of, of Ghosts at a Watchman in as much as it has a legacy and its effect on the legacy of To Kill a Mockingbird.